Borders are super handy in Celtic art. Today I'm going to show you how to create a really complex border in two different ways. Coming right up. Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Buziak of Aeon Celtic Art. I'm a published author and a Celtic artist teaching modern techniques and ancient art. I've been teaching these for the last 25 years from my website, as well as in my book, Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. Before we get going today, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you're kept up to date on all new tutorials. Today we're going to do a border again. Now this border is going to be quite complex, but don't worry, I'm going to break it down really easy for you, and I'll cover how to make it in two different ways. So one, using the dot paper like we've done in a bunch of other knots, and as well how to freehand this knot. So you don't have to use the dot paper in a lot of Celtic knots, it just makes it a really easy tool to kind of break down the steps and kind of make it foolproof. But you can freehand them as well. So in this tutorial I'll show you both methods, so you can use whichever one works best for you and kind of get going on the freehand stuff. There's a lot of flexibility to be had if you can learn how to do the knots freehand style. So for today's tutorial you're going to need a pencil, an eraser, a sheet of the dot paper if you do want to give the dot paper version a try, if not just a plain sheet of paper. If you're going to try both, then again plain paper and dot paper have both on hand, and let's get going. I kind of wasn't sure whether to call this tutorial one of my manuscript explorations or just have it as a regular border tutorial. I went with the regular border tutorial just because although we do use the example of the manuscript, I'm going to show you two different methods as opposed to just deconstructing the manuscript method. So six of one or half a dozen of the other, I guess. At any rate, the knot I'm going to be showing you today is a border design that can be seen in quite a bit of Celtic art. This example I'll show you here is from the Lindisfarne Gospels. It's the alternating blue and yellow portion of the border on this page. I'll just zoom in here so you can see a close up. So this knot design, you can see the yellow portion is the same as the blue portion, only flipped or mirrored. So for our tutorial today, I'll be drawing the one piece of the element, so the yellow portion there, and then I'll show you some different ways that we can combine it together to make the rest of our border. Now what makes this repeating design look especially complex is the fact that the single strand has been split or divided in two. So if you look at this dark channel running in between the two strands, you can see that it's actually a single thick strand that's been divided in two using the split weave method that I covered in a previous tutorial. I will go through that later on in this tutorial, but if you want a better refresher on it, you can check out that previous tutorial as well. I'll include it in the comments below this video. Now this design is actually the same on the top as it is on the bottom. So if you imagine a line bisecting it on the horizontal, you'll see that the top half is the same as the bottom half. So basically everything we do on the top half will be repeating on the bottom half as well. So to begin this design, we're going to start with kind of a C shape. Make it a nice big round fat C, almost like a full circle except it doesn't close on the right hand side. From where the C ends on the top, I'm going to twist it around and make a little turn. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Now from the top left corner, I'm going to bring a line down and it's going to end with a little curve at the bottom left. I'm going to do the same thing going from the other direction. So from the bottom right to the upper left, ending again in a little bit of a curve. Now coming from that bottom left, I'm going to come up through the center line and make a little twist that ends at the middle. And I'll do the same thing from the opposite direction. So from the upper left down, makes a turn and then joins on that middle line. I know it's a little hard to see with our drawn lines on top of that manuscript background, so I'm just going to repeat those steps for you in a side-by-side -side comparison so again you can see it on its own. So again we start with our C shape. From the top portion we make a twist up. We make a repeat of that on the bottom. I make a line starting from the top right, just a little above where that pink line ends, and it continues through the C and ends in a little curve. I'll put a few little dotted lines after my curve. Essentially this portion will repeat so that line will continue on, but we're not going to draw that in right now just because we're working on this one hunk at a time. Next I draw the matching line, so again it starts just a little below where that pink one ended, goes up through the C, 
and ends with a little turn. And again, I'm going to put those little dotted lines in. So use your imagination that eventually that will continue on and connect with something else. Now from the bottom left, we're going to draw this last piece. It's going to come from pretty much where that curve ends on the green line, goes up through that center line, turns and ends at the middle. Then we just make our matching one in the other half. Now just take a look at this a moment. So my blue lines should make a nice curve inside of that original C. So it looks really pretty if you can just sort of echo that same curve so it's sort of equal distant all around of that blue pretzel shaped kind of looking knot. Okay, so I'm going to make everything normal black lines now because we've got the shape drawn and I'll show you the next stage. So you can see from the black lines here that I have a lot of open space in the design. And here's why. Think of these black lines as like a center line. And we're going to be following this center line from either side. So starting with that C shape again, I echo that center line to either side. So by an equal distance, both inside of the line and outside of the line. I'll do the same thing with those straight lines. Again, just the same distance on the one side of that center line and the other side of the center line. And then we do our blue pretzel shape in the same way, just following on the inside and the outside of that center line. So I'm going to show you the next few steps without that center line in there. So basically just that new inside line and outside line that we just drew. And if I put our little manuscript page underneath again, you see it follows pretty closely to the original design. So let's just work on this hunk now. Now if we go back to our original manuscript, again you see we did the segment in yellow, but then the mirror to that is the portion in blue. So let's look at some different ways that we can combine or join that segment that we drew to make a full on border. And there's a few ways we can do this. The first way is to join it exactly as we see it in the manuscript page. So basically we take our little element that we drew, we flip it on that red dotted line, and that gives us a bigger hunk that we can repeat along our border. So basically that bigger hunk would just keep going as long as we needed the border to be. But there's a different way we can connect it as well. If we go back to our original knot based on the C that we drew, you'll see in the top left and the top right, we have two strands that are crossing each other. And in the bottom, we also have two strands crossing each other on both the left and right. So what this means is, I have two strands coming in on the left hand side and going out the right hand side. So they match both on the top and bottom. Two going in, two going out. On the bottom, two going in, two going out. That means those entry and exit points will match if we slide just that single hunk from side to side. Not all knots will work this way. So sometimes you'll have one strand coming in on one side and two strands coming out the other side. And if you repeat that hunk along, of course, you can't connect the one to the two on the other. You'll end up with one dangling loose end and nowhere to connect it to. So you always need your left and right to match when you're going to connect it along this way. So that's just another way that we can take that original hunk and repeat it multiple times to create a long border. Now let's go back to that other connection that we made, that one where we flipped it so it looks like the manuscript page. And the left is opposite to the right. Now if we look at these again, we do have these loose strands up in the top corners on the top left, bottom left, top right, and bottom right. So if we wanted this to be a standalone design or repeated multiple times to be a border, we would still have those left hand loose ends and those right hand loose ends that we need to connect to something to make a long continuous strand for the whole knot or border design. The easiest way to do this is to take each of those intersections and instead just connect them. And then instead of crossing over each other, instead they just join each other and become a continuous piece. But there's another way we can connect up those loose ends as well. Here we go back to the same overlapping version. And in this one, I'm going to connect that line that used to be the green line that goes straight through the C and ends in that little curve on the top and bottom. And I'm going to connect those two top and bottom ones together. So that leaves me still two loose strands on the left side. I'm going to connect them together as well by making a kind of tighter loop on that left side. And then I just finish the right hand side the same way. All that's left now is to weave our knot. So we do this the same as we've done with any other knot. I pick an intersection, any intersection, doesn't matter which. I'm going to start with that top left one. 
and I'm going to erase it so it looks like it's going over the strand beneath it. The red arrow shows the direction that I'll be erasing in. So if that strand just went over the one below it, the next strand it encounters it has to go under, and then over and under, and I can continue along that path until I finish the whole design and all my intersections are woven. I'll use that other version to show you this next trick. So you remember in that original manuscript page, you can see down in the bottom right of my video here, it had that extra line splitting it. So we did split weaving in another tutorial. Again, you can take a look at that if you want more examples, but I'll show you here how to do it in this variation so we can get a little more practice in. So to do split weaving, we almost have to take a step backwards. We wanna add that center line back in. Remember, this is the line that we echoed on either side of to give us our wide ribbon of knotwork that we could weave. But now we're going to add it back in. With that center line in, we basically treat it as instead of having one thick knotwork strand to weave around the design, we have two narrow knotwork strands that run side by side. Their overs and unders are going to be opposite to each other, so it gives it a lot of fine detail without a lot of extra work. As promised, I will now show you how to draw this design using our dot paper. So grab your sheet of dot paper and I'll show you how to do that. On your dot paper, I want you to mark off a boundary box that is nine big dots wide by five big dots high. And we're gonna put our walls in just as you see here. And I see in my artwork here, I miss getting that little uh, upright line on the right hand side. You see it on the left, make it on the right as well and draw it in on yours and we'll just keep going. Sorry guys, hope it's not too confusing for you. Now we're gonna make our little tipped over tic-tac-toes on all the small gray dots. So I'm gonna start with that upper left one and just continue adding it around all the others. Oh, and look, there is my little green line. It finally appeared on the right hand side. Next, I'm gonna connect my corners. So I'm gonna start with that top left corner and get that in. Then I'll do that bottom left one. And I'll just keep adding all the other ones where they point into the corners until I've got those all in my design. I still have a few loose ends that I need to connect. So I'm gonna connect those ones on the left side against the wall. Just where they angle towards each other, I'm just gonna connect them right up to themselves and keep making your way across the design until all your loose ends are connected and it's all finished. And now we just need to weave it. Again, I can pick any intersection. I'm going to start with that top left one. I'm going to erase it as if it's going under that other strand. The red arrow shows the direction that I'll be erasing in. So if it just came from an under, the next intersection it meets, it should go over and then under and then over. And I continue until it's all woven. So that makes our grid version of that knot. And if I put them side by side, you can see that they're very similar to each other. Of course, our free-handed one is a little rounder. That's something you could finesse with your grid one. Essentially, you're drawing circles with a square grid, so it does make things a little more angular. But you could always finesse those after and just smooth them out a little bit if you wanted to. I do have a worksheet for you guys this week. It's basically this knot, but done on the grid paper. So there's a couple variations there. You can go through and have a little fun with that. So there we have it, a complex knot put together in two different ways. So depending which clicks better for you when you're doing your artwork, you can choose one method or the other. You can also mix and match. So say it's easier to do your interior design in a freehand style, and then maybe you do the border in the grid. So just think of these as tools in your toolbox to use when you're creating your design, and just feel free to use whichever one makes more sense to you or for the project that you're working on. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell if you wanna be kept up to date on all new tutorials. These and many more techniques are covered in my book, Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. So if you like these techniques, make sure you check that book out. It's a great book for covering a broad number of topics in Celtic art. So with that, you'll be able to get started in all kinds of different techniques. All right, that's it for this video, everybody. Bye.